www.thefitgirl.com. I am Nadia John and uh, with us in Celebrity Corner today is a woman who defined the era of Lovers Rock, a superstar of reggae at a time where reggae captured the world's attention. Uh, today she is still a leading light. It is the lovely Carol Thompson. Oh, thank, thank you for you. having us today. Uh, it's an honour to meet you. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be interviewed by you. <laughs> Thanks for letting us into your house. Nice and cosy. Oh, you're welcome. Man. Okay, a few questions. Okay. <laughs> so, coming from a traditional Christian background, um, did you find any difficulties with being dubbed as the Queen of Lovers Rock? I didn't, but of course my parents did. They would have preferred me to be dubbed the Queen of Gospel, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen. But once they saw that I was very serious and um, also that I've been so well received, they were very proud. Great, mm. good stuff. <laughs> um, what inspired you to get into reggae in the first place? Well, I've always loved reggae. You know, as much as I came from a Christian um, household, you know, my father wasn't in the church, and he used to play lots of reggae and ska mm. and blue beat. So I grew up with that music, and I always loved it and um, understood it and felt it. And I was a great Bob Marley fan, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed roots music as well as you know soul and um, jazz and gospel. So and pop too. So I had a, a very wide. Um, a real hybrid of musical tastes and influences. So reggae was something that I felt very comfortable with. Okay. It was like a natural base for me. So when I was given the opportunity to do some reggae music, it was really a very natural yeah. process. And as I got more involved in the industry, I realised that the only way to really control, have some control as an artist, is to actually own what you're doing and have a, a real proper creative input. Because up until that time, most of the female singers had sort of just been cherry-picked yeah. here and there, and no sort of real business had been put behind them. They, many, not many of them had an album. I think the only, one, only other person who had an album was Louisa Marks. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was doing singles with lots of different production companies. So I decided, um, I was fortunate, my boyfriend at the time was also um, my co-producer, and, and um, he wasn't chauvinistic at all. And he was very encouraging and very supportive and said, yeah, that's a good idea, Carol, let's go for it. And he started a production company and so I did my, you know, where I had my own productions for my own albums. Plus, we also um, produced other artists as well. Oh, wow. So you had other artists on there. Oh, yeah. So you literally had full fledged over what you were doing and looking lots after others. Of, yeah, there were many others. Not the, um, lots of other little girl groups that I put together um, and I had hits with them, um, some individuals, I did a, had a track with Sugar Minot, we put out, we put out Winston Reed's hits, you know, Dim the Light and um, Daughters of Zion was on my label and Carousel. So yeah, we did a lot of things, it was a lot of fun, yeah, it was good, it was good. Right. After I did the Lums Rock album, um, uh, Billy Ocean's manager got in touch with me and said, would you like to, Billy really likes you, likes your voice, would like to know you to come and talk. And that was what was my, was my entry into the pop world, because at that time he was selling millions of albums. So I went and did the American tour with him, with Stevie Wonder and Gladys Knight, and did the whole Amazing. sort of yeah, Coca-Cola tour. And it was lovely, and that sort of opened my eyes to another area of the industry. And then I was then I then signed to Virgin mm -hmm. Records and I was part of a group called um, Floyd Joy, uh, which is a bit like M People. Okay. Yeah. That type of sort of like the precursor to M People. Um, so yeah, so that was that was really lovely. Um, I got to do a lot of great things there and travel and, and meet lots of different producers and so forth. Um, yeah, and then from there I just ended up doing lots and lots of um, backing vocals for some great acts and um, and sort of organising backing vocals and, and using all of my musical talents, which was really great, behind the scenes as well as in front, in the adverts and films, because um, I also played the piano, classically yeah. trained, so I did a lot of composing. One of the films that I worked with got Oscar nominated, so I went, I went to LA and did that whole mad LA thing, which was good fun, but you know, in small doses, yeah. and I came home, <laughs> and that, back to it, which is lovely, back to reality. 
So it was lovely exposure. You know, it was lovely to have that ability um, and that the fact that people would invite you. So after after I did Billy Ocean, yeah, well, often did Boy George, did Sting, did Stevie Wonder, Natalie Cole, yeah. Shaka Khan. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then just before Michael Jackson died, I did his worked on his last project here in the UK, amazing. which was amazing. amazing. It was, it was. I feel really blessed, and it was lovely. And he was lovely, and he was a, a, a real master to work with. He knew exactly what he wanted. Is there anyone in particular that you felt that you come into contact with that you thought that is they've made such an impression on you as, as an artist or? Um... Yeah, there's a few. I couldn't just say there's one. Mm -hmm. I think Michael Jackson definitely because he's an icon. Mm -hmm. He's someone who I grew up admiring and, and wanting to marry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so he's always been somebody in my heart, mm -hmm. his song, so many hits. So for me, that was a defining moment. Of Stevie course. Wonder too, because he's so talented. Imagine, yeah. yeah, and has a great sense of, um, his hearing is fantastic. You know, a whole group of us are singing, he can he point can, out which one's out of tune, mm -hmm. you know, just knows it's instantly, you know. Third soprano with you, you know, you know, he just knows. that That's his gift. He's gifted. The other um, musician that really impressed me was Dennis Brown. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked with him, I did a, a small tour with him and Aswad yeah. before he died. And he was just one of those musicians that just all just comes very naturally for him. He had so much, has, he had so much charisma on stage. He, he was just electric and his vocals were beautiful. He's up there with all the others that I've mentioned in terms of vocal ability. So, yeah, you know, Dennis Brown to me is, is in terms of reggae music, he would always be my number one okay. reggae artist, you know, so yeah. yeah. And how do you juggle family and career? It's very difficult, but I have a very supportive husband. I have a supportive a family, my mother, um, she comes and she really helps to just keep everything running mm -hmm. the way it should run, um, as, do. as mothers do. So I, you know, I think between my husband and my my um, mother, and the fact that I've managed to discipline my children mm -hmm. in a way that we can work as a family, that they can be successful as well, and I can get on with what I have to do in, a, in order to fulfil what I need to fulfil, fulfil and to put bread on the table. So we try and just work together as a unit, but it is difficult. Sometimes things do clash, sometimes mm -hmm. there's things I want to go to and it clashes with a rehearsal or a show. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the moments that I, I, I do get that pang of it, oh goodness. But fortunately they don't happen too often, I do try and organise things in such a way that we don't get too many clashes and I don't miss things are really important. Yeah, of course. But it's always, you know, the life work balance is a difficult, it's a, it's a challenge for all of us. Um, but yeah, with supportive family or good friends, um, I think that, you know, and communication mm -hmm. and planning. <laughs> <They're dying. laughs> planning, They're that's dying. the one. You know, with good planning and organisation and communication. Most things in life you want to achieve, you can and do it harder. Um, and let's talk about you as an artist here. Oh so, my oh, when I was a baby. Look at you. <laughs> great, absolutely great. Star icon in the making. <laughs> Get a fabulous. <laughs> Original. Get a fabulous. Goodness me, wow. Um, so, what was the rock and roll lifestyle like? Was it as glamorous as everyone thinks it was? What were the pros, the cons? Uh, give it all to us. Give us the juice. Well, you know, it's never as glamorous <laughs> as I think it is. You know, you know, it's hard work. It's you know, eighty percent hard work and or eight, ninety percent hard work and ten percent being on stage with nice clothes and yeah. makeup. All right. So that little ten percent, you know, it takes eighty percent of a lot of stuff behind the scenes yeah. to make that ten percent work. So it's a lot of work, a lot of commitment, many hours, and it, it is hard work. But if you really enjoy something, you don't really feel the work. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's all part of the territory. It really doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes the hours are long, sometimes they're short, sometimes they're inconvenient. But rock and roll lifestyle, I've been a mother, you know, since I was yeah, at college. Mm -hmm. I had my first child while I was still studying. Wow. Yeah. Right, so I have always been a mother. So for me, I couldn't afford 
to be lying on the floor drunk. Yeah. Can't, can't work, right? So it didn't work for me, not part of my culture, not part of who I am. Mm -hmm. So for me, there was a lot of that going around, you know, a lot of drugs, a lot of drink, mm -hmm. a lot of madness. But because I was a mother, first and foremost, I had to really think about the fact that I'm here to do a job, yeah. I have a purpose, I have my dignity and self-respect. Mm -hmm. And you go on and do your things, that's, that's right. fine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to do a job. So I never really got involved with any of it. Wow. And so, you know, I, I managed to just navigate myself through all that madness, through from here to LA and back. And Never still manage to meet managed big to. people and still yeah. pursue your career still and still be no. successful. Still say no. Say no, smile and say listen, no, but thank you. I've got a new album called okay. Feel So Good that okay. I finally completed and another album that I'm about to start as well. And I'm also, I've also joined forces with Janet Kay, another oh, wow. rock, Lovers Rock legend, and Victor Romero Evans, another Lovers Rock legend and actor. And we've managed to get together and devise a, a piece called the Lovers Rock Monologues, okay. which really charts all our songs. Um, so it's, you know, our monologue, then the songs. Um, it's funny, it's heartwarming, it's true, it's relevant. And we've, we've had one run already off West End at, at the Tricycle, and that okay. went really well, that was a sellout. Okay. Um, a whole family's come, the whole family, mothers, grandmothers, children, all come. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely piece. So we'll be taking that to the Albany Theatre mm -hmm. in Deptford, mm -hmm. and then we'll also be at the Bernie Grant Centre on the 24th and the 25th of October. Okay, so just the and two, then nights. two nights, and then we'll be in Birmingham mm -hmm. in November. So, so yeah, people just look for it. It's called Lovers Rock Monologues, and yeah, come along. It's really fun. You'd love it. Exactly. Why you were working with the late Michael Jackson, we have to ask, right. did you meet Bubbles at any time? <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles was nowhere to be seen, but no? his, ch his children were there. Okay. Yeah, wow, all, all his three. Three children were there with their three nannies. Oh, wow, well, well, each. Yeah, each child had their own nanny. Okay. And they were lovely, wow. you, know, you know, they came in the studio and gave us all a hug. And, you did as well, and you know, wow. I'll send you, I'll send you a picture. I'll send you, I'll send you a picture of it. You know, yeah, Michael's lovely. It was absolutely, you know, it's a real loss. Well, thank you, Carol. Thanks for having a chat with us. I'm like in awe of everything you're just saying. Um, and thanks for talking to us at clubclubgirl.com. And good luck with this, this um, amazing. Oh, I'm going to come and watch it. I am. So it's the 15th of October. Yeah, it's at, at Albany, yeah. which is in yeah in Deptford, South, mm -hmm. South East London, isn't it? Yes, and it comes to goes north to the Burley Grant Centre. Then it goes to mm -hmm. Birmingham at the Drum. At the Drum. Okay. Then. Lovely. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Chat with us. Real girl fishing clothes. So that when you walked into that club, you felt like tonight is my night. I'm gonna shine so bright. Yes, I'm gonna stay beneath the light. I put on my slacks and sorry. Yeah, now. I put on my slacks and sovereigns Ooh, 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 ooh
can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Looking for a girl, I know it won't take long. Cause I put on my slacks and sunbridge and my crocodile shoes. And my silk shirt too. Yes, I look so good.